And so I went on this job interview and I'm thinking, I got it. I think I got it nailed, right? I'm a, you know, Oregon Duck Hall of Fame, played in the NFL. And so I went up in there thinking that I had the job in the bag and, you know, start asking me questions. And I was answering them. I know how to do my research. I'm answering them like when they started, who they serve, the grants that they, they write and all this type of stuff. And then she started asking me questions about me. And I couldn't answer them. I couldn't answer the simple questions about Alex Mobin. Because everything, I was answering, but everything kept gearing off towards football. Not about Alex. And she stopped the interview. And she said, uh, Alex, sweetie, uh, you're not going to get this job. And let me give you a little bit of advice. Before you go on any more job interviews, you need to find out exactly who you are. What's happening, beautiful people? Welcome back to the Thrive After Sports podcast. This episode you're about to listen to is an interview with Mr. Alex Molden. He is an author, keynote speaker, business and leadership coach. I probably left some of the credentials out, but all around great human being. I know you'll be able to take a lot from this episode. Alex is actually one of my mentors. We were introduced by Dr. Sarah Lepe from Rebranded Athlete. Shout out to you, Dr. Sarah, if you're listening. She's been on this podcast countless times. She introduced Alex and I about a year or two ago. I learned so much from him about life and about business every time I speak with him. And when you guys are listening to this episode, you'll hear exactly why that is. All of the links to connect with Alex will be in the show notes. He actually recently interviewed me on his podcast, The Shark Effect. You can click the link to go listen to that on The Shark Effect podcast below, or you can just go back to episode 242 on Thrive After Sports. As always, whenever I go on someone else's show, I like to share it on here. Let's get right into it. Thank you for all of you who are clicking the five-star button on Apple Podcasts or Spotify. Thank you for those of you guys who are subscribing to the YouTube channel, liking the videos. I appreciate you guys sharing and helping getting the word out about Thrive After Sports. Every time you do that, it helps us get in front of more of the people that we are trying to serve. Without further ado, let's get into this episode with Alex Molden. Peace. All right, so I'm here with the man, the myth, the legend, Mr. Alex Molden. Great to see you again, Alex. Thank you for coming on the show, spending some time with the Thrive After Sports family. Absolutely, man. Thanks for having me, man. I get to see, what, what was this, just two weeks ago that I was on your show? A week or two, maximum. Yeah, let me see. Yeah, it was something like that. It was something like that. Either last week or maybe two weeks ago, yeah. Mm. But I got to tell you, because we recorded like two and a half, three weeks ago. And so I've had, I bumped you up. I don't know if you knew that, but I bumped <laughs> you up within the, you know, within the cycle. Right. I appreciate that. That's love right there. Man. I'm on the guest list. I was already excited just to be on the show, but for you to bump me up, that means a lot. Yes, sir, man. Hey, when you got quality info that can help others, oh, I'm and and I try to have that with every guest that I have on. But I think I just thought that, you know, our conversation, man, it needs to be moved up a little bit. Wow. Well, I'm gonna do the same for you. This is coming out ASAP. So for all right, let me just preface this conversation by saying this. For those listening. Get your notepads ready. Buckle up. If you're driving, you might want to pull over. If you normally listen on double speed, put this one on regular speed. Take your time with this one. Alex Molden is on the show, folks. Uh, I need some applause buttons. We need to have like some applause in the background right now. I might, I might put something in there right now just to be funny. Uh, <laughs> uh, Alex, I, I don't think I could do you justice by making an introduction. How do you like to introduce yourself to people these days? Oh, man, you know. I'm a former I'm a former professional athlete. Played in the NFL for eight years. Um, drafted in the first round. Dream come true. But I understand now is that's a that was a platform, you know. And so I introduce myself now as a I'm a leadership and personal development coach. I help people. Um, I help people do things and reach things that they they really want to do, and they really want to achieve. And I don't place feelings in there, meaning it's the same thing that kind of gave myself success. I'm sure, you know, yourself, when you think about it, it just is I was more intentional. But it was like when I started to say that, you know, where I wanted to go. They don't care where that place, that goal where I want to do or achieve doesn't care how I feel. Meaning 
There's days I didn't want to work out. I was tired. I was sleepy. I had a lot of things. I had a lot of things on my plate. But my goals, they didn't change. They don't, they don't care how you feel. So I take that that same angle to my, you know, my coaching clients or the teams or the groups that I speak to. So um nah, yeah, man, I don't know. That's I don't know. That might have been a little bit long for for intro, but um yeah, man, I, I help people achieve things. That was a phenomenal intro. I had to write this one down. This is a quotable moment right here. You said, the place I want to go doesn't care how I feel. Ooh. Right? When you start, <laughs> because there was there was certain times, Taj, like when I was younger, right? And I was, uh, I wanted to play. I started to find out about this whole football thing because I didn't play football until eighth grade. I didn't watch it. My dad didn't play catch with me. We didn't go over drills, none of that type of stuff. But I started to find out about this game. And then when I was doing that, a lot of my friends, they played it. So I was like, cool, I want to I want to see how far this thing can go. So I started to be like, hey, man, so we're going to work out at 7 a.m. at the gym? Yeah, everybody's cool. Yeah, yeah, we're all, we all down for it. And then when I get there, nobody's there. And this was before mm -hmm. cell phones. You know what I'm saying? This is before cell phones. And so I would get there and I'd get into my feelings. And I'd be, man, F them dudes, man. They ain't sorry. And so then I was like, well, if it's about them, then how is that helping me? You know, I'm, I'm, I'm in my feelings. I'm feeling like stuck and I'm, I'm bitter. I still got to get this. I still got to get this working despite how I feel. And so when I started to kind of look at it and break it down, I was like, man, you know, and now I have, I have kids. Me, me and my wife, we have eight kids, right? And there's some athletes in there. And one, you know, he, he's, he's doing what dad does, you know, or did. He's in the NFL. I have another one that, you know, he, he has a very bright future. He's a freshman on the high school football team out here. And I tell them early, I say, look, where you want to go? It's lonely. It's lonely. And no matter if it's sports we're talking about or entrepreneurship, as me and you, we, we've discussed, you know, it's a lonely road. So it's better to get ahead of it. I think it's better to, like, understand, like, if there's there's things that you want to achieve, then not a whole bunch of people have done it along along that road. Man, there's going to be there's going to be lonely days. But to be great. Yeah, I think you have to be different. To be different, man, it's going to be lonely. So getting ahead of it first um, so you don't let your emotions. I, I think a lot of times because, you know, understanding leadership and there's influence and with that there's influencers and understanding what's the, the one of the most powerful influencers is how you feel. It's intuition. Right. So how do you feel? There's people who've done some great things based off of a feeling, based off of an insight. And it's like, man, they, 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 they love, they love feeling this way. Well, and it's, and it's positive. Well, on the same thing, there's, there's people that me and you and many other people know who they've done something negatively because they might felt good doing it or they make a decision based off of a feeling. And now they're incarcerated. So I understand the, the, the power of intuition and, you know, how you feel can, if you're not um, intentional about it, it can, it can hurt you. But if you're intentional about it, it can help you. Mm. How do you, because I can't let go of this quote. I, I might really have to print that out with your face on it and put that on my wall where you want to go. Does it care about you, how you feel? And I know you were talking about football in that context, but like you said, these principles apply to life, which is what you teach others now. And so when you think about, you, you talked about intentional, right? So that means someone has to have a vision of where they want to go first before they are able to discern whether or not the feelings are serving them in the process of getting there. Can you talk a little bit about how to, be intentional or how to craft a vision for yourself so that you can even figure out where you want to go? Absolutely. And I'll tell you, you know, from life experiences, right? 
So um, I, I take things through my football lens, right? So I take things, information, because I'm not that smart. I'm not as smart, but I've, I've been through some things. I know how to filter things, right? So I take things and put it through a football lens, and then now it helps me understand a little bit better. So one um, instance, I was uh, I was done playing football. I, re- I retired or, you know, kicked out of the league. That's what typically happens. People, it sounds cool when you say, yeah, I retired from the NFL, but only about 5% of cats, like, step away and they – hang up their cleats and they, you know, they you know, they sign where they're supposed to sign and then they're officially retired. Most of us were kicked out. We want to keep playing. We just don't get another opportunity. Mm-hmm. So, but I was, I was done in 2005. And so, you know, I had millions in the bank, multiple cars, multiple homes, beautiful family, everybody's healthy. And I just didn't, I thought that I was going to play golf and work out and, and that would be it. And it, that got that got kind of boring after about six months. So I went, okay, well, what do I do? I don't, I don't know. And so I end up, um, you know, because I did some nonprofit work, uh, and every team that I that I played at, I did some nonprofit work, some volunteer work, work with the boys boys and girls club. And so I end up getting into this nonprofit world as a uh, it was um, Fresh Start Surgical Gifts. So it helps. It helps individual underprivileged kids with um, plastic surgeries, things that, you know, medical or insurance doesn't cover, like cleft palates and whatnot. And so I did that for about six months, and then we moved to, to Portland, Oregon. And I was, once again, I was stuck. I didn't know what I wanted to do. So I ended up, you know, finding on uh, monster.com. This was like before Indeed. Monster.com, I saw this, this uh, entry-level position at this nonprofit. And it was like, I think it was like $42,000 a year or whatnot. And I was like, I just, I just wanted to do something. You know what I'm saying? I want to feel like I'm giving back. I'm, I'm, I'm helping others, right? And so I went on this job interview, and I'm thinking I got it. I think I got it nailed, right? I'm a, you know, Oregon Duck Hall of Fame, played in the NFL. And on top of that, the NFL, if you employ a vested, a veteran, of the NFL, they will give you a grant of 5,000. Mm. So I'm like, man, they got, I got this, I got that. And, and so I went up in there thinking that I had the job in the bag and, you know, start asking me questions and I was answering them. I know how to do my research. I'm answering them like when they started, who they serve, the grants that they, they write and all this type of stuff. And then she started asking me questions about me. And I couldn't answer them. I couldn't answer the simple questions about Alex Mogan. Because everything, I was answering, but everything kept gearing off towards football. Not about Alex. And she stopped the interview. And she said, uh, Alex, sweetie, uh, you're not going to get this job. And let me give you a little bit of advice. Before you go on any more job interviews, you need to find out exactly who you are. Now, Taj, your boy, I've been cut before, meaning, you know, I'm on a team and then I'm not on a team. You know what I'm saying? Like, I, I, I've been released. I've been cut where, you know, they, they walk you up, you talk to the general manager, tells you that you're no longer, your service is no longer required. And then on top, and then when that happens, then two security guards, they walk you down into the locker room. They give you a black plastic bag and then you bag up all your stuff. And then they walk you out of the facility. They take your little key card and they walk you out of the facility. Good luck. And that's embarrassing. You know, you, you're there with your, your teammates and then you're no longer there. They see it. Everybody knows. It's kind of like, you don't say anything. It's embarrassing. How much would that happen to me? 10 times and someone tells me I don't know who I am and they were right. She Mm. was right. So I walked to my car, man, cried my eyes out, cried my eyes. I wept. Then cry. I wept. (laughs) But that moment changed my life. And I think when, when you, 
when you get broken down, stripped down to the core of who you are, and you're not in, you're, you're embarrassed and you have all these different emotions, man, there's something that can be created from those depths. And for me, it was like, okay, I need to, I need to listen to the truth. The truth was I didn't know who I was. I just thought I could just keep, you know, this football, this football thing. It was, no, it's not. It's what I did. You know what I'm saying? It's, it's, it's what I did. It's not who I am. So, you know, I, I'm very wary. I hear things at a different um a different level now. You know what I'm saying? Like those dog whistles, you know, mm-hmm. you, you whistle and then the dog, you know, nobody hears it, but then the dog hears it at a different frequency. I hear that now. And I hear it, um, you know, when these parents or these, these athletes, when they start talking about they eat, drink and sleep football or basketball or their sport. And I hear it at a different level. I said, that's dangerous mm-hmm. because that's only there for a small amount of time. No matter if you play college or if you're blessed enough to play overseas or play in the, in the big leagues or the NFL, NBA, like you get lost. And when you're done with that sport, a part of you is, is dead. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? And so it's, it's, it, can, it can be dangerous. So I have so many questions, but I'll start with this one. So, when she said that to you, was that the first time that you had actually started to think about it uh, in terms of like, I'm assuming before she said that, which is where the, the, the tears came from, like you didn't know that you didn't know who you were. What, did that Had that thought ever crossed your mind? Never crossed. Not I once. Didn't know who I, no, <laughs> not, not once. No, not once. That's why it, it, it hit so hard because... I didn't have people in my life at the time that either didn't know me or didn't tell me the truth. You know what I'm saying? Like, didn't tell me the truth. Like, hey, Alex, man, um, you know, you know, you're going to have to move out of this whole football thing. It's, it's, it's no longer your platform. It's no longer what you do. So, what is it that you're passionate about? Are you passionate about anything else other than this sport? So I think, you know, relationships, I didn't really have those that somebody can really like, either they knew it or they just didn't share it with. Them. So I think it's important to have people in your life that can be able to, man, that can basically hold up a mirror because we think the character, you know, we all have different characters we play that we have. And the cool thing is uh, you can change your character. And so I had this character that got intertwined with like really like my my abilities and my this character, this football player. I played it so well that it was really hard to separate the Alex Molden from Alex, the football player. And I, I, I think with most people, you know, the conversations that I have on my podcast, the conversation I have with people in general, is they're this person and then they put on this mask and sometimes they can't take this mask off. And so um, it's it just like understanding that who you are is different than what you do. Right? Who you are is different than what you do. It's not, it's not the same thing. Because when you stop doing that, then what? That's what happened to me. When I stopped doing that, now what? Now I'm lost. Mm-hmm. I don't really know who I am. I don't know what I like. I don't know what, what don't I like. So I had to start to develop. Um, I need to start to ask myself questions. Right. That's one of the things that got me unstuck and not just asking, but then answer, <laughs> you know? Right. So when you left the interview that day, Alex, that began your journey of figuring out who you were. And so what, what, what was that process? Like what questions did you start asking and answering for yourself when you left the interview that day? So, 
number one, it, it would be so cool if I said, man, after that, you know, weeping in my in my car. And it was a nice car, too. <laughs> I bet it was. But <laughs> <laughs> after that, the next day, you know, my life changed. No, it was it was years. Mm-hmm. It was years. You know, but I did start to ask myself, OK, what what did I what did I want to do? You know, what type of impact did I want to have? And so I started thinking back and it's like, okay, who had an impact on my life? And so I started thinking back to, man, when I was at the boys club, I remember being inspired. I was inspired by this gentleman named is Ron Brown. And he was like the direct director at the boys club. So every, anything that went down in the gym, he was the, the main guy. And he was a strong, strong brother. And he used to, uh, I remember, you know, changed my life. He asked me, man, hey, you want to come work out? Let's go work out. What's that? Lift weights? I didn't know anything about that. So he taught me how to lift weights. So that was one thing he taught me. And then here's another thing is he had a brother that played for the Oklahoma Sooners. He played running back. And I didn't know what, the, I didn't know what the scholarship was that. And I started to, and I found out about Scott. Hold on. So he goes to school, he plays football, and they, they pay for it. And that changed my life. And so I started to, like, you know, look for, for things to, to get inspired. Like, what inspires me? You know, and so for me, I wanted to help out that, that other, how I was helped out. That's what I wanted to do for, you know, for others, especially young, young athletes. And so I, I started to train. You know, I started to um, take what I've learned and not just that, because I did that and it was very shallow how I, how I was, I, I used to train athletes, but I didn't give them principles. I gave them cool drills, the same drills that I, you know, that I learned, but there was no real like principles, like why we do this. So you have to teach first, right, before you drill. I was doing the drills. I, I did drills, and then we we play games. So, but what changed everything, and what has really been a catalyst in my life is relationships. And so I started um, working with this guy. His name is Henry Barrera, and you know Henry was um, man, a little five eight Hispanic cat. He played basketball overseas for a little bit. But um, everybody knew him in this new city we were seeing. And, uh, you know, to me, he was a rival. You know, I'm like, I'm, I'm, I'm Alex Mott. I'm, I'm a speed specialist now. I'm a strength and speed specialist. But this guy, he didn't play at University of Oregon. He didn't play at this. Uh, and so I thought he was a rival. And I started and I spent time with him, you know, introduced you know, we had a cup of coffee and then we started talking about how we train and stuff. And I was like, damn, he knows a lot of, he knows a lot more than I do. Yeah. And so, uh, we, we, we did some, some, some training together, training kids. So I got a chance to like ear hustle and, and the principles that he was teaching these kids, they were foundational. They were foundational principles. So there was a lot of, talking and explaining things, but then they understood it at a foundational level. And then we would do some drills and then we would play games and then we would tie the things that was taught to now you get to see it in real life action in games. And so I started to learn like that. And then so my development and becoming a better speed and speed coach, man, tremendously went up because of the relationship that I had created between me and my, you know, I thought that he was my um, competitor. He was my competitor. But I started to, man, this dude knows a lot of things more than me. I got to put my ego in my back pocket and I got to reach out and have him kind of mentor me. That was and so the power of coaching and mentorship, the reason why I was able to, to have that mindset, because I was like, man, remember, I'm not that smart. I got to put things in a football <laughs> lens, right? I got football lens. So the reason I was able to do some amazing things 
that a very small percentage of people are able to do is because I had coaching, people who knew more than me, and I would listen to them, and I would watch them, and I would listen and watch, take notes, listen and watch, take notes. So I knew that it wasn't just based off of ability, but my ability to get knowledge from others. So I used that same mindset to become better at, you know, something that I really wanted to, to do. I wanted to be a strength and conditioning coach, a, really a speed coach for, for young cats. Mm -hmm. I have, okay. I have a lot of questions about that, but the first, the first one is just to put it in context. How long were you doing that coaching, um, speed coaching before you got into becoming an author and a speaker and a podcaster and a businessman? That's a great question. I want to say that was, um, that was about like 10 years. 10 years. Okay. Yeah. 10 years. So I started, yeah, I started doing that back in 07 and along the journey, I ended up, you know, becoming a, 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 a master trainer, a Nike master trainer. So, you know, Nike headquarters in Beaverton, Oregon. And because of relationships and whatnot, I was able to, you know, get my way onto campus. And when I did that, and then now people started to know about me and my background and, and now how I teach and how I coach, man, people wanted to fly me out to New York, to LA, to Canada, to Taiwan and work with their, their high profile athletes, you know, Kawhi Leonard, Chris Paul, you know, all these dudes, Des Bryant, all these different, you know, people in the, um, you know, within the Nike industry and their athletes, they wanted another athlete who knows and thinks like them and knows how to uh, communicate with them. I started doing that. And along, along the way, I'm learning and doing more, being more intentional about leadership and then getting my own coach mm -hmm. who helped me and who helped me understand, like, you know, cause I started there. I had these different speaking engagements I was doing. They were all free, of course. I didn't know what the hell I was. I was telling cool stories, and people wanted me to tell the, my cool stories to their departments within Nike. And so I was doing that. And um, and I was like, man, I started to talk to this this uh, real speaker who was getting paid, a professional speaker. And he started to coach me. And he started to pull these different stories out of me that were kind of buried. I'm talking about deeper stories, not just stories like on the field that, you know, sounds good. It was fluffy, get standing ovation, but nobody's really like, how does that apply to me? How do I use that same principle to get better in my life? He started to help me pull those things out of me. So then I started speaking. I was started, you know, charging. And, and then I started to, and, and then the pandemic came and then, which, you know, for some things, for some people, some tough times can be a blessing. And for me, the pandemic, things slowed down and it became a blessing. You know, I wrote a book during that quiet time. I started a podcast during this time and, uh, you know, met you, you know what I'm saying? So it's, it's, uh, there's, there's different things that, you know, when you're intentional about it and who you want to serve and who you want to become, things start to become more clear. So I want to go back to something you said earlier before you started training, where you were like, you asked yourself the question. One of the questions you were asking in the discovery process was, who is someone that has had an impact on my life, which caused you to sort of look back at how you can be that person for someone else. I think that's key. I don't want people to miss that because that really sent you on the trajectory of you know, and I'll say this because I know you have a lot you can share about this. I'll say this too. I think that sometimes when athletes ask, we ask ourselves that question, like right after we're done playing, we automatically go to coaches or people in athletic departments or people on teams. And people are probably tired of hearing me say this on the show, but I, I do say those are all great careers, which yes, you can be successful in, but I want to challenge athletes. And I know you talk about this too, Alex, to look outside of those things not that those aren't great careers some people are born and destined to be doing those things and stay in the world of sports in some way shape or form 
some people you would serve the world better if you start to look at other ways you can serve the world and look at other ways people have impacted you so that you can have that impact on others so what, what are your thoughts on that that's beautiful yeah man it was um i think when i started to look at it i didn't want to be a coach because i was realistic mm -hmm. and i know how much time that those coaches put into coaching, which takes away from the time that you can spend with their family. And so I knew early on that wasn't for me. You know what I'm saying? I had eight, eight kids and I want to watch them grow up. I want to be, I want to play a, a, a big role in their development. And not saying that coaches don't do that, but I just didn't want to leave it up to chance. So I knew early on I didn't want to I didn't want to go in, into that world of coaching in college or or in the pros. So um, I just started. I, I did the thing that that gave me success on the field, man. I stole. <laughs> <laughs> I watched I watched dudes who had more success than me, and I would watch them. And we had them on every team I was. There was a dude that man he does that really well. Hmm. Let me steal that. And then I steal it and I got to borrow it. And then I, some of the things that might work, uh, I, that doesn't work for me. I'm a little bit taller or, or I have a little bit, you know, his, his foot quickness is not like mine. I'm a little bit quicker, so I don't need to do this. And that. so I borrow it, make it mine, and then I can give it back. So, so that's kind of what I did is I kind of looked back and like, man, what are some things, you know, people in my life that, had an impact on me and then I, I with ron brown man i want to borrow that i don't think i want to work at, at a boys club in a gym environment like i want to borrow some of the things that that he did and the feeling that he gave so you can be able to borrow it and it's it's like having conversation it's watching individuals having conversations and it's like man i like what you do how do i you know, can I have a conversation with you so I can learn what is some of the hiccups? What are some of the, you know, because just like anything else, like social media, we only see the good things. They only, people only going to show us like the, you know, the gold and the, the jewels, the diamonds from it. But what is some of the things that you sacrifice to get there? What are some of the relationships that you didn't choose, but that were put on you? And yet you still had to move forward, mm. right? Because people think that, you know, these successful entrepreneurs or athletes, that they chose every relationship. No, I didn't get to choose my coach. The only time I got to change, I, I, got, to cho I got a chance to choose my coach was when I chose my my leadership, my, my speaking coach. That was one of the few times in my life I, I chose a podcast coach to teach me how to, I chose my, my, uh, my, um, my book coach to help pull a book out of me. Those are the only times. Most of the times those relationships was put on me. So then it's like, okay, how do I still move ahead? Even though this, I didn't choose this relationship. And a lot of those coaches, even at the highest level, they were horrible, <laughs> horrible. They didn't teach me. They didn't, they didn't teach me a whole bunch. Their ego was involved. They're doing things to keep their job. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> to keep their job, not to make me a better player, but they're doing things to, just to keep their job. So it's like, what, what type of character do I need to adapt to to still move forward? Mm. I want to go back to something else that you shared earlier, because I think this ties into how you said the pandemic, you know, for many, it was rough, of course, but for many, it was also a blessing in disguise. And that's what launched you into all the amazing things you're doing now. But going back to what you said, you know, upon retirement, you're like, I'm just going to golf every day. I got all the money in the world. And I think that was so important for you to share because so many people think that money is going to solve everything. Like I would love to just have all the money in the world and travel and kick my feet up on the beach until you realize, like you said, I need to have some sort of purpose. What am I actually doing? 
that's what brings ultimate fulfillment and not the money. And I know you have a lot of people reach out to you. I know you do because I have people reach out to me. Taj, I just retired. I just graduated from college. Man, I got to get some money. And I, I always try to tell people, as I'm sure you do too, like the money will come as a byproduct of you getting clear and intentional about your purpose and your mission. So what are some things that when you're talking to, and I know you just don't talk to athletes, we're talking about leaders, you know, you work with, you can work with anyone, but like, what are some things that you tell people when they're in the process of trying to figure out what is my purpose? Like, what am I supposed to be doing? I've tried to figure it out, but I'm stuck. I don't even know where to begin. I, I think the, the biggest thing is like, what's your foundation? My foundation when I was playing ball, it was my career. If I'm being honest, it was, it was, it was career, then my family, then my hobbies, and then my faith. Mm. If I'm being totally honest. And when you when I looked at it, and, and then the, and then I looked at my actions, not just my words, you know, people who have words and they can do. I look at my actions. That's what it was. And when I, when my coach, Eldridge Broussard, when he started asking me these different questions and then my actions and, and then, okay, so what should it be? There's no judgment. What do you think it should be? And I was like, man, I don't know. And then he, he, then he was like, well, what if it's your faith? Because your faith if when your faith is your foundation and things don't work out your way, if things, if there's hiccups and there's bumps in the roads and stuff, you get told no. Now it's not about like, man, I suck. Man, I blew that. I didn't know when faith is your foundation. No, that, that that's not the position or the relationship God has planned for you. Mm. So it's, it changes your perspective. So once my faith became my foundation, then my family, then my career, guess what? I was in alignment. Just like a DB. A DB, when, you, when you're playing against some of the best athletes in the world, you can be beat off of alignment. You can be beat before the ball is snapped. I don't, I didn't want to, I, that's happened to me before. It's a terrible feeling to get beat by a touchdown, beat, beat for a touchdown, and your, your team loses the game. And then you go back and you watch the film and it can be corrected easily off of alignment, not based off of ability, based off of alignment. So like I, like I said, now tell I shot when I got to put things through a football, <laughs> football's, you know, type of deal, then I understand it more, but. When I start, okay, when my faith starts to become my foundations, my foundation, and then my family, and then my career, everything got in alignment and I started to have success. Mm -hmm. And I started to make, I started to make, I started to make a lot of money and I wasn't playing football. We did like a, over at Nike, they had this project and they were linking up with, um, Microsoft and they developed this video training game called Connect Training. Well, they use me as an avatar. So I'm in a video game. I've, I've been in football video games, mad, right? But I was in this video game and my avatar is on it. And so I did like a three year contract, made six figures. Man, I was traveling the world. I was doing all these beautiful things. And uh, on one particular trip, I was in Paris. And this hit me hard. As I was in Paris, man, it was so cool. I got to see the Eiffel Tower, but I was alone. Mm -hmm. My wife, my wife wasn't with me. I didn't have any kids. Even like the, the Nike people who were like in charge, they had, they had meetings and stuff that I didn't have to go to. And so I'm traveling. I'm, I'm, you know, looking at, you know, this beautiful Eiffel Tower and stuff, and I'm taking pictures. I'm, I'm a tourist. I'm like, man, this is cool. And I was like, it ain't really cool if I can't share it with somebody who I love. Mm. You know what I'm saying? And so it kind of gave me that feeling when, um, um, you know, when I stopped playing, 
I was thinking I was going to play golf and, and work out and it was going to be beautiful. No, it's not beautiful. If, I, if it doesn't, you know, align with the new version of myself and my purpose. Hmm. Man, I'm, my mind is blown by what you said about how putting the faith first and basically reorganizing the priorities of the order of importance and thing in your, things in your life changed everything for you and gave you a different lens and a different perspective with, with how you move and how you think and how you operate. And the relationships, right? right. That's, that's such a, a big thing that, you know, I became more intentional with. And I started to look at it and find, you know, I started to look at relationships that I had in my life or relationships that I really wanted to or needed to start to create so uh, it can push me closer or deeper into what my purpose was. Mm -hmm. And so like the, the getting a coach, that was, man, that is, it was the biggest rocket fuel I've ever had in my life for somebody with the point, I give them permission to look in different crevices in my life and seeing if my words and my actions and my responses, my war, do they align to where I want to go? Hmm. And, you know, that's why I think, man, the things that you do, things that I do is helping people start to, because people can talk. I was a smooth talk. But does the actions match it? And then, excuse me, do you give people permission to call you out when it's not? To call you out and, and correct you when things aren't aligned? So um, that was, that was a, a big aha moment for me. Hmm. Alex, Man, I'm, I want to be respectful of your time. I'm being mindful of the clock right now. But before we get out of here, we have to talk about the shark effect and not just the shark effect as in the podcast or the branding or the speaking. Like I got your book right here. I was oh, just man. brushing up on it yesterday knowing I had this interview coming up. Folks, yo, you got to grab this. You know, I don't put my stamp of approval on many books unless I actually think they're worth the read. Go grab Alex's book, uh, The Ultimate Playbook for High Achievement, 11 Keys for Success in sport and life this is a phenomenal read one of the things i appreciate most about it is that some people they want to write a book just to talk about themselves and have it be an autobiography this book you wrote it in a way that it tells your story but also allows you to allows people to take lessons you recap each story with a lesson and i think that's i i tried to write my book the same way so we're on the same wavelength before we had even met each other. I was like, I'm going to write it, tell my story, but also teach lessons about it. Um, but talk about the shark effect, the podcast, everything you have going on. I know people listening. If you were listening to this episode and you're hearing Alex speak today, you're going to go check out the shark effect podcast for sure. Shameless plug. I was a recent guest on there. Go check yes, that episode out. Yes, he was. Um, but Alex, okay. What is the shark effect? Can you talk about that concept first before we get into yeah. it? Everything. Yeah, absolutely. Well, you know, Shark Effect, number one, it's, um, I came up with the name. I heard the story about this, um, uh, this Japanese fisherman. And this Japanese fisherman, he was fishing and he was catching fish and everything was, was Gucci, right? But then more people came and they was fishing. And so he had to go take his boat out farther. So he took his boat out farther to catch these fish and then like days. And then he would come back and now the people weren't buying the fish the same way. And, you know, they wasn't fresh. The fish wasn't fresh. And so, you know, he, he got smart. He said, okay, I'm going to put some freezers. I'm going to put some, some big, huge coolers on it, on the boat. So when I catch the fish, I freeze them and then bring them back. All right. He did that, brought them back. The people still didn't, still didn't buy the fish. So he got smart. He said, you know what? I'm going to put a, I'm going to put, um, uh, aquarium. So a bite and catch the fish. I can put them in water. That's definitely going to keep them fresh. He did that. Brought them back. Still people, they didn't buy it. It still didn't taste fresh. So frustrated. He finally walked to the, the old man at the end of the dock, old wise man. Hey, what, what do I need to do? And he said, it's simple. You need to put a small shark in your fish tank 
that small shark will make those fish move. And so he did that, and lo and behold, people start buying the fish. So we, we need to get, sometimes we need to be motivated. We need to be motivated to become who God is, has given us the power to do. We need to be motivated. We need to be inspired, and the inspiration lasts long. And so, you know, the people that I have on, I don't have, uh, I, you know, it's not about just fluffing them up and telling them all the great things. No, man, what was the time that you had a trouble in your life? Whether it was, you know, because I have like athletes, former athletes, current athletes. Um, I have entrepreneurs. I have business owners. I have uh, executives. And we talk about, number one, how did they get to where, they, what type of foundation or principle did they follow or did they create to get them to where they have so much success mm -hmm. and then like what type of uh problems or whatever did you have to overcome to get you to there and so i love having conversations man because I, I let me tell you i love being inspired i look to be inspired every day now i also look to inspire others because one conversation, Taj, one conversation can change someone's life. It depends on how deep you go, right? I can't change somebody's life by telling them that, you know, I was uh, drafted number 11 in the 1996 dra draft. I can maybe, oh, give them a little inspiration, but I can inspire somebody by telling them, a deeper version of myself. I, actually, that story that I told about, you know, being told that I didn't know who I was, that was buried. That was so painful and hurtful. I buried it. I didn't even tell my wife. I didn't want to be embarrassed. Like, but then once I started understanding leadership and the different influencers and failure, now I said, oh man, that, that story, that can impact people's lives. And so once I started to, you know, unpack it and first have the emotional control. So when I tell that story, I don't just break down and cry. You know, I got to be able to own it, dissect it. Why did it happen? And then now I can create a deeper connection with somebody. So now somebody can hear that story, hear the principles, and then they can move forward and they can become better. That's what, you know, that's what, that's the conversation I love having in person or using a media form such as, you know, my podcast or other people's podcasts. Right. Well, you definitely uh, checked the box and did the job of inspiring folks today, including me. Every time I talk to you, I leave inspired, man. That's why I love talking to you so much. My guy, my guy. Say, hey, <laughs> let me tell you, the, few, the feeling is mutual, man. I love what you're doing, the impact that you have and the people that, you know, the conversation that, that we have, and I know you have, um, on you know your, your your podcast and you know you know the the, the group that you have the the uh the private group mm -hmm. that thrive after sports um those people can hear these different things and then they can move about their way and being more aligned more aligned with with who they who they want to become who they want to be man alex uh this was phenomenal i know people listening Got a lot out of this today. Thank you for sharing your story, even the parts, like you said, that um, you once had buried. Because as you know, those are the the stories that really change people and let them know that they're not alone and know that there's hope on the other side of those stories and you can come out of it and you can be as successful as you are. So before we jump off, where can people find you? Where do you want to point people to? Uh, what's the best place for people to to look up? Appreciate you, big dog. Um, man, you just go to alexmolden.com. That has my... Um, my speaking, you know, speaking uh, website. It has um, my uh, podcast. You, you can purchase a book. It's where you can find me. My social media is all on that. So I just keep it simple, man. AlexMolden.com. <laughs> That's right. And folks, yeah. all of that will be in the show notes. So just scroll down. All of that will be down there too. Make it easy for you. Thank you again. This was phenomenal. I knew it was going to be great. It's not like I'm sitting here surprised that it was, but uh, honored that you, you sat down and, and spent this time with the Thrive After Sports family. So I appreciate you. Man, thank you for showing up and being who you are, man. Like being who you are and owning it. 
I mean, that's uh, we need more people like you, more people to be able to, you know, share the things that the experiences that they had, that they that they had and to share with others and help give them a fast pass. Mm-hmm. I hope people who listen to this, this episode, they can extrapolate something that can give them a fast pass to success. Whatever success, how, however they define it, however they define it. Mm. Folks, you heard it. This has been another great episode of Thrive After Sports with the man himself, Mr. Alex Molden. We'll see you on the very next episode. Peace.